off the start for these guys. I don't know what song they're playing right now, but they should be playing Mob Deep Shook Ones because these guys had two rough last games, have an opportunity to get some momentum right now in this one. Maybe they're Shook Ones. You ain't a crook, son. So there you see Chaos going to that gun trips, tight end formation right here on your left. You see trips over there on the left. You got a tight end and a running back on your right. It's kind of like the gun bunch, but they're not bunched up together. I love to hear those substitutions. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is going to be big. Chaos is in white. Joke is in the all Navy for Seattle. And Joke's just trying to shoot this gap right here to blow up the runs. That's why he's sit sitting there on Bobby Wagner. And Wilson can't get rid of it. And already we got second and 17 for Chaos. And this is one of those games, you're playing for seed and you, you both already advanced out of the group. You might want to be careful about how much stuff you show. You don't want the rest of the competitors getting keen to your tendencies because you know they're watching closely. So after the big sack, Chaos trying to regroup here on second down. Little motion. And back to back sacks, paper or plastic. Right up the middle, getting penetration from the middle of that defense. And Chaos, he's really worried. You see him ID in the mic on that outside slot corner. Needs to watch out for those block sheds coming from the Grizzlies right, in, right on that side. See how Joke switches to the right side when it's not a run situation. Rest in peace, rest in peace. Throws it to Jimmy Graham underneath us. Can't even fit in a parking spot. Joke's album, by the way, coming out around Christmas. It'll make a nice gift. Joke up, bars. Freestyle Friday. Rap City. I'll drop a few bars if we have to. <laughs> I'm ready to go. I, I got money for that. <laughs> Fourth and 16. This is just reckless abandonment right here. Fourth and 16. YOLO. Oh! And lock it on his horse, RG, to the crib. <laughs> That's a rough play to give up if you joke. If, it, if he was actually in, my life, they fuck around and get in jeopardy of getting eliminated from the group, I think he'd be a little bit more emotional there. But still, can't be too happy about giving up a 4 for 16. That's never a good feeling. Was that an underneath coverage adjustment? I, what happened is Got behind him. he sent the goons, and this is Joke's responsibility. He's supposed to be guarding that Y route, but he stayed underneath him trying to lurk a bullet pass. Let Locker go over the top. Chaos put some nice touch on that ball, gets himself six. Good execution by Chaos. Well, we've said it before, you live and die by KJ Wright. That time you die. Yeah. I mean, you're trying to guard Lockett deep down the field. It's, it's a mismatch. So a seven-point lead for Chaos. Starting to put the wheels back on the wagon. Yeah, a lot, a lot more calmer in this game. Meanwhile, Tweez is over on the other station. He's got to be swagging, knowing he's in that final four. He's played well. You know, I'm wild, sort of his guy. It sort of reminds me of an I'm wild run. Yeah, you know, that he had Absolutely. back in Madden 16. Final four. Number me. It's a box. It's a box. We're one of the brightest personalities we have. Scott Cole and RG with you here for the f sort of the final games of this group. We got some, well, we got some good bad coming up a little later. Oh my goodness, that next group is stacked. You got Skimbo, you got Dubby, you got True Boy, Stevie J, who, you know, he's no joke. He was one spot away from qualifying for the Madden Championship last year. They took the top 32, he was the 33rd seed. Well, you wonder, for a guy like Stevie J, watching what Chaos has, has sort of gone through, and then on the other side, seeing what Tweez has done, two newcomers. Yeah. Wh which one are you going to choose? So we got a seven point game here. Let's check in on the other game, Zach. I've got Duke on offense, opening drive, tries to go for the end zone, instead drops the pass. He does capitalize and get three. He's up three nothing over Tweez. Appreciate it. We got a. 
third and inches here, and he doesn't get it. Good defense right there by Chaos. You needed inches and you lost inches. There we go, Joe Curry and up. And there's a little speed around and no sir. No first down for you. Chaos locks him up. Comes up big. Into rounds though. Chaos. Into, into rounds though. Hey, a little wide receiver quick's tough. You ever run that? It was tough last year. You could you could cut it up for a minimum of two. They like to do that spin right spin right yeah. into the gap right after. You need, a, you need an LTB there, and it didn't happen. Nice find. Ooh. And but a better hit. He's going out of space. Wow. That's a punch him in the mouth play if I ever saw one. Cam Chancellor not having any of it. They got to get RG. Wow. Wow, that's how you break and make contact at the point of the catch. If I'm a coach, that's what I love to see from my players. Punch them in the mouth. So second and 10. Good job. There's another big hit. Uh, pay attention during pre-play. If you see that M symbol come up over some of the defenders, that's the, pers the player on offense ID in the mic. And that means he's telling his blockers, hey, you got to go make sure you pick up this guy. That's a new feature in Madden that we've never had before, and it's a fantastic mechanic. Can it? Well, you can always think of Peyton Manning, you know. Omaha, Omaha, 51's the mic. Yeah, exactly. And that's exactly what it is. And a nice find there for Dougie Baldwin down to the 26-yard line. Shout out to game designer Clint Oldenburg, the former NFL lineman to get that feature in the game. He's an absolute good. I mean, my shoe collection's better, but he's still a good. Yeah, his, Clint's shoe collection is strong. That's a tough one. <laughs> First and 10, it's not a competition. <laughs> From the 26. See the range. And Wilson can't get out of trouble. I just want out of space. And he's gonna lose Ooh, three. Lady again, I got him. You can feel the vibe, when the difference between a game that's for seeding yeah. and for elimination. It's, it's a completely different vibe. You see these guys just kind of keeping their cool, staying relaxed, maybe trying out a few things. This is a good opportunity to maybe try some things if you really need to. Well, that's why you wonder if Joke decides to use Seattle for this game. He yeah. says, you know what? I'm either not going to show anything with my Falcons or... I'm going to try out Seattle, see how I feel with them today. Yeah, no, that's a really good point, and I think that's exactly what he's doing. And that's part of the strategy, right? you got to know when to show all your stuff, and you got to know when to hold some of it back or to try some things, maybe take some risks. It's all very calculated. Now, if you got to the play call screen and you chose the Browns, then we'd know that you're okay. Speaking of the Browns, <laughs> guess what club series Joke signed up for? There you go. Cleveland Browns. It's of course, he was a big Vikings fan. And we're like, oh, so you're a huge Vikings fan. He's like, no, I just like the I like the purple uniforms. Yeah. Yeah. Not a football guy. He's, yeah. I mean, he's a football guy as in he knows the game. That's how he's good at Madden. But not a, hey, on Sunday, I'm be in the red zone channel yeah. and some chips and salsa. Exactly. That's you not him. You took the words right out of my mouth. He doesn't have four fantasy teams going, watching Hanson on red zone, locked in, dead serious. He doesn't have a team that he really pulls for. Like me, if the Patriots lose, my mood's ruined for the week, you know? Good for you. It doesn't happen that often over the last decade or so. Fortunately, knock on wood. We got a pretty good quarterback. I hear good things. What was Tom? What was Tom Brady's lowest overall rating? I believe when he was the backup to Bledsoe, I believe he was all the way down there to like 68 overall. Or maybe it was 58. It was bad. But so nobody knew. His, his rookie year, he was rated 57. I was. I'm always one point off on this. But his second should, year, he was a 51. He went down. Don, where's Donnie? <laughs> Donnie, where you at? But also, he was uh, in the 99 club four years. So, pretty good quarterback. Joke in this single back ace. This is actually a good formation. It's a balanced formation. You can run the ball out of it. You can pass. Oh, and there goes Rawls. It's got to get loose for Joke. 
And Rawls does make house calls. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> Little torpedo celebration no, into the end zone. A hell of a man. Some joke bars. Hell of a plan. I don't think this is Dispiaso or whatever. Yeah, he <laughs> what told me he was said. listening to Spanish music. I think he trolled you. He trolled me. Despiaso. Des no, it's Despacito. Despacito. Hopefully I didn't butcher that. I'm Take the one. one butchering it up. So on second and 11, Thomas Rawls with three. some huge broken tackles. And now we got a game again. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't want to just not try to win this game. This is, you know, you want to get into a rhythm. You want to get onto the other side. Um, both of these guys have already lost to Tweez. So remember, the loser's on the same side of the bracket as Tweez. Probably don't want to run into him again. So winning the game at least gets you away from him. The thing is, both of these guys will have to play an additional game. Tweez already in the final four. Or these these guys going yeah, to gonna be, play another uh, match. It's a little bit different match. this year. Yeah, they'll be going into a wild card. Exactly. So, just like the announcement of the Ultimate League, things are moving more towards an NFL setup, even with the playoffs here in the Classic. What an announcement that Ultimate League is. We got 16 teams, 10-game season for each, to each player. I'll probably just miss it. I'll probably be like the 17th guy. <laughs> maybe, maybe you're 18 hey, don't or so. Don't you dare try to qualify. <laughs> you, you better be right here in the booth come, come Ultimate League season. You don't have to worry about me qualifying. Yeah, I don't think, you, I don't <laughs> that, think either that, one of us want problems no one, with those guys. No one is concerned about me qualifying, <laughs> I can tell you that. See that M? That's him ID in the mic right there. Second and 18. Able to get rid of it. And Baldwin oh, takes a big hit from Cam Chancellor. Now, you're not going to see a lot of fumbles right now but what that hit stick does is it doesn't allow the extra yards yes exactly we talked about that last night where though they're using the conservative ball carrier to prevent a lot of the fumbling when you land those big hits as you said it makes sure that that touchdown that joke just had where you oh, yeah. grab tackle he breaks out of it and he takes it to the crib none of that's happening once you land the wood and hit him with that big hit this time, Russell Wilson can't get rid of it. You see greatness. Fourth and 17. You Take a look me, at this, you RG. Oh, you <laughs> see me, you see <laughs> Joke with no passing yards. Chaos with zero <laughs> rushing yards. I think Joe, they might want to be working on some things here. <laughs> That's you know? right. Of course, both these guys will advance out of the group stage. <laughs> nice fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Finally, we get a smile out of chaos. <laughs> Thank goodness. I, I didn't like seeing him on tilt, man. <laughs> well, uh, we'd be remiss here if we didn't talk about Duke, his consistency of getting here, but once again, not going to be moving on. My, my heart really goes out for him. I mean, he has made over five live events. And he's yet to be able to make a serious run yet. It's, it's really strange. This is something that he needs to be able to put together at these live events, and he's just not getting it done. First and ten. And that gets it coming up on the two-minute warning here. These guys are casual. This is some casual man, and even though Joke ain't a player, he just crushes a lot because those five sacks have been big. Sending the heat. Chaos trying to ID the mic, but the pressure's coming from from some other areas. So second and eight. Handed off to Rawls. And here's the thing, it's kind of, this reminds me of kind of like an NBA All-Star game, or a pro ball game, where everything's all cool now, and, but once you get to the fourth quarter, your pride starts to kick in a little bit. And you really do want to win that game. Oh, absolutely. So fourth and three here for Joke. He's at his own 29. Both these competitors with three timeouts each. We're gonna get, we're gonna get to see Joke put the ball in the air finally. Oh, 
Wilson finds Lockett for the first down, and he'll use a timeout. Nice play there by Joke. Good play right there by Joke. Riddell Brito, 24 years old. Number three in the MCS last year. Kent Oslander, a.k.a. Chaos, 22 years old, from Herndon, Virginia. I hope I didn't butcher that one. He's using the Chargers offense, the New England defense. And he said this is his first year really being able to take competitive Madden all the way serious. He said last year he got into it, but between practice and school, I mean, he was up till 5 in the morning playing games. He didn't get to put the real amount of time he wanted to put into the game. He said this year he's all in, and hey, he's already at a live event. Only eight people made it here. Let's remember, there was hundreds, possibly thousands of people trying to qualify for this. And the fact that you get to be one of those top eight guys, that's something special. They've all had a road to get here. That's for sure. Of course, he's. Hey. Cass is right near that DC area. And he calls Ooh. the oh interception. God, oh, right when he threw it, he said, Pick. <laughs> joke not too happy. <laughs> the joke mannerisms after <laughs> certain types of plays are just. <laughs> it's a deep breath in the wide eyes. And that's a nice job. You know, you have that Tampa 2 where you, you got those guys up and then they're able to fall back on that out route, especially when you're not, when you're not pressing. See, the first step of those corners is, is backwards in the cover. Yep. And I'm glad to see everyone not pressing all the time. We talked about that earlier in the tournament. Yep. These guys get too obsessed with doing that. And baseline press, baseline press, baseline press. People complain about the baseline press, but that's the risk of doing it. You guys, not a baseline. You're not meant to align directly over the wide receivers. You're supposed to go to your default positioning. And sometimes your default positioning is not directly over a wide receiver. And that's the real risk with doing that. Sure, it helps you set up some blitzes. Yeah, that, I think that's, oh, that's the main so reason, right, is you could, especially if you're like in a 3-3-5 or 3-3-5 odd that the Patriots have, you you're able to bring that, that nickel back down onto the line. Exactly. You kind of see it right over there. See how he's not aligned over that receiver? That's because he's in his default position. In. But that's what baseline's supposed to do. So if someone comes out in a compressed formation and you want them shading out to the outside and not aligning over the receivers, that's when you call the baseline most of the time. Or say it's like a eye twin tight end and you want the cornerback outside of the tight ends to play that run baseline's great in that situation. If you're going up against a five wide type of spread type of offense, baseline's not always the best look. For those that don't know what baseline is, it's a mechanic, you press Y, and then right on the left stick, and that makes your players all go to their default positioning that they were at. It, it kind of go, don't align over the receivers, just go and align to where your default spots are. Well, here's the field goal. He ran the clock all the way down, called timeout. And he's going to make it a six-point lead for that man right there, Chaos. Currently leading Joke. These guys are much calmer. Let's go over to Zach Farley. Rolling out of the pocket. Like We've got too. a 10-6 game over here. Gun bunch. Moments ago, this one heated up with the man himself. Running the ball, breaking tackles, rumbling, stumbling, bumbling and doing it while being humbling. He goes all the way in, 10-6, and now Duke is trying to battle back with a minute 45 to go. He's just looking to salvage this thing at this point. Unfortunately for him, he's just trying to get a win. He's been eliminated. Third and two, minute 35 to go. Let's watch this one here over on the B stage. Ryan, patience, time in the pocket, dots it up down the seam to Julio who cannot Hang on to the ball, and now it is a fourth and two. He's still got his timeout, so it's not a horrible situation for him to be in, but ultimately he does need more than a field goal. He has four-point deficit he must overcome. He wants to get his first victory here in Group B at the Madden Classic. Matt Ryan going deep, chucking one time, and Julio Jones with the rack for the touchdown, Duke takes the lead in this one. What a deep throw downfield. Knew we had speed advantage on the defender. 
and was able to rack it in for the touchdown. Almost looked like he was kind of just giving up on that one, but he clearly had that four-play, 76-yard drive with Matt Ryan caps it off to Julio Jones. Beats Lane on the score. And when Earl Thomas can't get over to a ball, you know it was a good read. Shout out to Duke for playing tough in this one. Tweez already locked in in the number one seed. He's got a devastating spin move. Lock it to the edge. He's been running that all day long on the kick returns. 13-10, he trails by three. And he goes back to that strong, close set. He needs a field goal to extend this one into overtime or a touchdown to win it. Russell Wilson play action fake. Gets screamed at, breaks a tackle, but cannot escape. Grady Jarrett's able to haul him down to the ground. Very interesting for Tweez. He calls his play. So a lot of Madden players, they go by formation. That's what you're going to see the bulk of good players do. Always call your play by formation. He goes recent plays because he knows what he wants. Rolling out of the pocket, Russell Wilson's going to scramble. Good click on by Duke with Riley, but misses a hit stick. And it lets Tweez get to the 50-yard line with 39 seconds to go. Here you see that recent play menu. Some players go with coach suggestion, but if you want to get anywhere, you want to improve your game, you've got to start calling your plays by formation. Stick with a couple formations that you like. That's what you're seeing a lot of guys do today. Single back spread, strong sets. Some guys like to go with gun bunch. You learn all the plays in one set, and then you always have something in your back pocket to beat a defense when you know it. 17 rushes, only three passes in this game for Tweez. It's been a ground game, but he needs a drive here. Looks like he was going for X, had the route, the deep post open, but could not get Russell Wilson to unleash the ball in time. Second and 10 with 34 seconds to go. The youngster, 20 years old, the most composed player in Group B. Trying to get one more win before he gets a bye in tomorrow's first round. Going to scramble with Russell Wilson. He's been doing it all day long. Just his second rush with Russell. 28 yards, third and one. Field goal range for Seattle's probably about the 34-yard line, so he'll need a first down here. If he wants to feel confident. Remember, he kicked a 54-yarder to win his event in El Paso. So this kid does have great special teams. Goes to the short drag rather than the B route behind it. Picks up the first down. And now he's at the 38-yard line, so he's right on the edge of that range. We'll see how he decides to play it. He's playing with house money at this point, so he might get a little bit more aggressive. He might decide he wants to take it to overtime. We'll see. Tackled inbounds. He's going to save his last timeout and use it with 13 seconds left. And now you have a decision. Takes about five seconds to kick a field goal. You've got to find it in the menu. He's going to take it now, not risk it. 53 yards, and he's going to get iced. Duke takes that timeout, makes him think about it. Kicker's out there swinging his leg, dancing. Blair Walsh to tie this thing with 13 to go. Might have missed this. Wide right. And Duke is going to grab the victory. Special teams with the QB, Neal. A missed field goal for Tweez in a game with no pressure on Tweez. Couldn't deliver and ice this thing up to go to overtime. So Duke's timeout working. And now he gets his first win of the day. But unfortunately for him, it's been too late. Final score, 13 to 10. Dave, Rico, nice little game to end that one there for Duke. Absolutely. Thank you, Zach. That's a nice way to save face for Duke, getting a victory here at the Madden Classic. Jumping back quickly over to this joke and chaos game, Rico. Chaos obviously got real fired up last game. He seems to settle back down again and focus in a little bit. Absolutely. He's managed to get his emotions under control. He, I think the knowledge of knowing he's moving on has allowed him to regain his composure and say, OK, I got to think about tomorrow. I need to think about playing and winning. And there you have it. And speaking of tomorrow, here are the standings. Tweez is at the top of the group. Duke, even though he won that last game, not going to come out of Group B. We see Joke and Chaos. They're going to finish this last game up and finish off Group B. But after this, we have Group A, who is going to be playing later tonight. You see it there, Stevie J, 
Dubby, Skimbo, True Boy, some of the best players in all of Madden. Cannot wait for that. Right now, Adrian is down on the sidelines with Chaos. Yes, thanks, Dave. So, Chaos, right now you're one and one. You are leading in this game 13 to 7 over Joke, and you know you're moving on. So, you're just playing for seeding. How has that impacted your game? Uh, I'm still trying to play my best. Uh, I don't want to get any bad habits or anything. So, I'm trying to do what I can. Uh, he's playing good defense against me, so I just got to try to do better in the, the second half on offense. And I know you tend to be kind of an emotional player. Can you tell us how are you approaching this game knowing the energy that runs through you? Uh, well, last game I let the emotions get like the best of me. Uh, I think it made me play bad on offense. Um, so I'm trying to just stay controlled, and it helps me to play better. And in the first quarter, you put the first score on the game, what, it was fourth and 16, and you threw it a locket, ran it all the way in. Can you tell us what were you thinking there? Uh, well, I, I, don't, I don't like to punt very much, and uh, he sent eight. I think, or sent the crib, and uh, I saw he was trying to use her locket with a linebacker, so I just kind of lobbed it to him, and he got over the top. Well, nice work there. Good luck in the second half. To the Gasters. Thanks so much, Adrian. She has still yet to learn our names. Scott Cole and RG with you. Uh, she's doing a fine job today, by the way. Uh, Adrian's off. Digging, digging. I did some digging myself, Adam Schefter style. Uh, I looked at Chaos's Twitter, and he said, the game was not bad. I played bad. So when he thought about that last game, he finally realized, all right, well, maybe I didn't do some things I should have done. I said it. Madden is not all sunshine and rainbows, and it's just like football. Why do you think you see head coaches always look like they're ready to snap on the sideline? <laughs> football, whether it's in real life or a video game, is an emotional game. It takes a toll on you, and that's why we always talk about being able to keep those emotions in check. It's such a key part of the game, both on the virtual gridiron and in real life. Well, Joke will get it first here to start the half. He's trailing by six. These guys are playing with seeding. Who's going to be the number two seed coming out of this group? Yeah, right now, chaos and control. Up six. Joke with the ball, though. Pretty committed to just running this ball. Boy, Thomas Rawls, nine carries for 127 yards. I like what chaos said where he, he said, um, you know, I'm trying to win this game. I'm not trying to, you know, take it easy, get myself out of my rhythm or whatnot. So I, I like that attitude. Um, the question for me is, as we move, you know, towards tomorrow, what team joke will come back tomorrow? I, I believe we'll see joke back with the Falcons. Tomorrow's going to be insane. Got to go with your first love. Can't second guess yourself. Tomorrow's a different kind of vibe, old friend. When you got single elimination, you sure. got well, you got to go to what you know and what you came here to pre and prepared with. And I think for joke, that's playing with the Atlanta Falcons and running that gun bunch offense and airing the ball out. So these guys will be moving on to the wild card stage tomorrow. And there is that quick wide receiver and lock it out to the 43 before Earl. Not seeing a lot of jukes, really, like successful jukes from these guys. It's been a big part of the meta in Madden this year is being able to juke out defenders, get on your horse. Not a lot of that going on so far today. Back to Rawls. Of course, it was that fourth. It was actually a third in inches that turned into a fourth and one where he ran that wide receiver quick. Got blown up. Got blown up. And here is Thomas Rawls to the 33. Disappointed in the feet heat out of this, out of I, this group. I can't say anything about <laughs> feet heat. I, I'm, what you got, rock ports on over I there, man? No, just something that's comfortable. <laughs> Comfortability is my main concern at all times. So down to the 25 is Eddie Lacy. I do want a pair of 14s. I've been hounding all you sneakerheads out know. there. Well, I, I nobody can find. Obviously, I have multiple pairs of the shoes you want, but your Gee, foot's bigger than mine. You would. You can fit into a twelve. What do you wear? Like a, a ninety-three? Thirteen, smallest I can go. You gotta squeeze in, then. Just get you a shoehorn. <laughs> Joke, just moving the ball here, Coltrane. Yeah, in the red zone. Second and in inches. So if you're Christmas shopping for RG, 
Jordan 14, last shots is, is, is what RG wants on the shopping list. You hear that, Tracy? <laughs> Ball at the 13 now, first and 10. And Richardson gets it this time. Choke just keeping his cool. One thing that's always interesting about after these first days of the event, because you know our events usually run in multiple days. Sure. Is seeing, you would think it's a long day, the players want to get home, you want to rest. Not at all. It's, yeah. it's midnight practice time. They get back, they hit the lab, they watch all the tape, they see what worked, what didn't, where they need to make adjustments. And you know there's going to be a lot of that going on. Because actually both of these guys flew out their lab partners. Joe flew out Beast Mode Mac from EMB to help yep. him lab. And then Chaos flew out his good friend and competitive Madden player, Master Gamer, to help him prepare as well. And that's actually a huge advantage in these situations where, you know, you go back to the hotel and you need to prepare. Um, having somebody to help you do that is a big deal. So that, that was a veteran move from both of these guys. And there is Lockett on the wow. wide receiver quick. And pending the extra point, Joke's going to take a lead here with eight seconds left in the quarter. Joke just cruising along with this wide receiver quick. Hopefully he doesn't uh, convince himself that this is the way to go. <laughs> 13 plays, taking up four minutes and 48 seconds and going 73 yards. And that quick's a tough scheme. That single back ace formation, there's a lot to account for. So you already got to stop the run with the stretch and the dive. The wide receiver will motion. You can hit him with the quick. There's also a handoff that makes it look like it's a quick, and then they give it to him on a slam play. And there's also a play action play out of that same setup. So uh, it's a really nice formation to, to mix it up out of, and it's balanced, so you never know what side it's going. It's the same thing whether you run the ball to the left or the right. And uh, personally, those are the formations I hate trying to defend, those balanced type formations, like a single back ace, a single back type slots, like we'll see from Stevie J. Those are, those are really hard to defend. Well, I think that was the first rushing yard of the game <laughs> for chaos, and Joke is yet to throw the football. <laughs> he has one, uh, one pass. Did they did they plan this? I mean, are they are, are we getting trolled right now? And Baldwin will move past the 35 to the 38, and it'll be the new set of downs. The chaos looks kind of looks much more prolific when he keeps his cool, huh? Speaking of keeping his cool, he said when he won his Philadelphia Challenger event, his father Bill was watching, and when Chaos made it to the finals, he got so nervous he had to turn the game off. <laughs> he had to turn the stream off. He couldn't even watch his boy play in the finals. He was too nervous about it. But I love seeing that when you talk to these guys and you hear them say about how their families and everyone back home knows what they're involved in and supports it, and it's something really cool for them all. Hearing those types of stories, it just it always brightens my day. Kicked a 50-plus yarder as being iced by Sirius Mo with a four mile per hour win to get here. Yeah, that's in the Philadelphia Challenger yeah. event that Chaos won, like you said, to get here. And Sirius Mo, I mean, he's a he's one of the top players, not just this year of of all time. That's the, when you're talking, you know, elite of the elite. You know, that upper echelon of Madden player, Sirius Mo is in that tier. Not many players in that tier, Scott. No, he's a top three all-time kind of guy. Don't at me. Did we, did we just see a quarterback sneak for a first down? Hey, it, it was inches. It, it can like, work. It can work. I think it was third and one inch. <laughs> Maybe a half an inch. It makes it more interesting because in previous Madden, everybody knew, oh, quarterback sneak, it's automatic. Yeah. It, only the top players had defense for it. If you were a casual uh, Madden player, you barely could ever stop that play. It makes things a lot interested in those short yarded situations because you really need to call something else. And it, you know, it's not as automatic as it once was. 2.42 left in the game. Chaos trailing by a point. And he hands it off to Richardson. He tries to spin move, and he's going to lose four. <laughs> Try to take a page out of Joke's playbook right there. A little <laughs> wide receiver reverse. Not as successful. He's going to take this all the way down. Look at those stats right there. It doesn't get more juxtaposed than that. That's funny. Two. How many rushing yards do you have? Two. 
Hey, it, it, it's a more lax format in this type of situation with this new group style. I really enjoy it, but you could find yourself in these situations where you're just playing for seeding, and then when you're in a field of only eight people, seeding sometimes doesn't matter as much because everyone you play is going to be tough. That's right. There's no sweet game. Second, 13 and a half. We're here at the two-minute warning. Both guys with three timeouts, and there's Cliff Averill making another play. That's actually Bobby Wagner. Oh, that's crazy. Joke playing some defense. Freaking him, I do joke. Have you seen the Mercedes Benz he's driving around in? Oh my god. I goodness. have seen this. It's a nice car. I'm jealous of that and 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 Golden Sports 50 million coins. Those are <laughs> those are the two things I'm jealous about. Joke one that uh he said that Mercedes-Benz was his gift to himself last year for having such a good year at the Madden Championship Series. Came in third, still took home quite a bit of coin. He said he had a problem where he had to call AAA to get get him, get his keys out the car. He locked himself out. He said, what do you do for a living, sir? Like, this is a really nice car. He said, I'm a gamer. I didn't believe him. It's a real true story. You better believe it. Fourth and 34. What play do you got for this? <laughs> There's the correct play. I mean, he's punting. He got, he got a punt it. He's got three timeouts. He's going to have to play a little defense, one first down. Joke should be able to win this game. Doesn't get the friendly bounce that he got last time, but it's out of bounds at the 12-yard line. A minute and 11. That's how far we're away from the next groups, too. Skimbo, Dubby, True Boy, and Stevie J get it on here in Los Angeles. Woo! It's gonna be that group is going to be fire, Scott. Was that your Ric Flair? You don't want to miss it. Props to the Nature Boy, <laughs> dirtiest player in the game. Who doesn't like Flair, huh? 106 to go. Second and seven. Chaos with two timeouts now. Got to prevent Joke from getting this first down. Rawls stretches for it. Just shy, so it's going to bring up a third and short. This is, this is really it for the game right here. Because going for it on fourth down, if your Joke's a little bit risky, because if you don't get it, he's already in field goal range, only down one. Chaos is already in field goal range, only down one point. And if you're just joining us, this is regular mode, regular teams with a 40-second play clock, not a 30-second play clock that you find in some other modes. And Rawls will not only get the first down, but however much Joke wants to get, and that's to the 26. GG's in the chat. There it is. Good game right there. Joke seals it up, gets that stretch. We were talking about the stretch and the balance formation. It's hard to stop. Thomas Rawls on his horse. Oh, my goodness. Well, now they're just wilding. I think he tried to throw a target pass. I that, think he threw a target pass. That could have been bad. Look at Chaos. He's like, are you trolling me, Joe? <laughs> What's up here? Hands it off to Rawls. He'll pick up three. Good show of sportsmanship by those two. And that's one thing. It's amazing, right? Because these were guys a game ago that were about to lose their freaking minds in the Madden world, and now they're cool as a cucumber. It's because they knew they were advancing out of that group. That stress of not knowing if you're gonna have to come on this trip, and your trip's over, and you gotta go home, and you didn't make the run you wanted to make, and you don't know if you'll ever make it back here, that's a very stressful feeling for Madden players, especially guys like these that devote this much time to the craft. So it's a stress I can relate to, I've been there. So Joke gets out of the group. So does Chaos. Joke will be the number two seed. Is that a momentum builder or meh? For, for Joke, I, I think it's a more of a meh. He, I don't think he's happy the way he's played earlier in this group. He really wanted to win the entire group, get that by, make it to the final four. Um, but, you know, you'll take it, right? Anytime you can get a win off of against a player of th these type of calibers like Chaos, you got to be happy. Well, Adrian, standing by with Joke. Take it away. Thanks, Dave. Joke, you're advancing as the two seed there, and you took the win. How was the game for you? 
Uh, I tried a new offense because uh, I was playing pretty bad offense. And uh, I tried, went to a new offense, and it worked out pretty well. And the last two games you played with the Falcons. This time you went to the Seahawks. Why is that? Well, I knew I was going to try to run the ball every play, and so I wanted to have more defense. Like, when I used the Falcons, I used them to pass the ball. I kind of went to a run-heavy offense, so I switched to the Seahawks because I'm going to still be able to run the ball, and they're going to stop the pass and the run better. And you were down by six at the half, and then you made the comeback. What changed? Uh, I think I scored after half, and then I stopped him, and then I think I mugged out the game. So now you're in the two seed. You're going to move on to the next round. Is there anyone that you really want to play? Oh, no, I don't care who I play. I'm, I'm looking forward to whoever I play. All right, well, congratulations for moving on. Wish you the best. Dave, Rico, it's your turn.